On today's episode of Motorhouse, we ask the question, have we fixed the problems with my badly running V8? Stay tuned to find out. Hello everyone and welcome back to Motorhouse and if you're tuning in from our last episode you'll know that I'm in the middle of finding out why we've been having some really bad running issues with my V8 Land Rover here. So on the last episode we tore down the engine, investigated the cam timing and found that well to our surprise it looked like I'd actually timed up the cam correctly. The dots on the timing pulleys were fine so we dug some further. Was it the cam pulley that was made wrong? Well, after looking at two sets of timing chains together, it wasn't that either. That led us to the inescapable conclusion. The cam itself, it would appear, has been ground incorrectly. So how do we go about fixing that? Well, there's a couple of ways. You could use a timing gear set that would correct for that. But to do that, you'd need a very expensive vernier timing gear set, which is about half the cost of a new cam in itself. In Instead, what we've decided to do is just go down the road of buying a brand new camshaft and changing that with new lifters and everything involved. All right, so we need a new camshaft, so what are the options? Well, I could have gone for a standard camshaft, nice and easy, straightforward fit, and cheap as well, but a bit of a shame not to unleash some extra horsepower whilst this is all torn down. So after pouring through reams of cam data information, we've decided to go with a Kent H180, which is a standard hydraulic camshaft, and it's what Kent call a sports torque cam. Now there are some much more aggressive cams that you could fit, certainly ones that would unleash more power, but that's not necessarily what we want for here. A lot of really aggressive cams mean that you have to do additional machining work to cylinder heads, and also they almost certainly are delivering that power, way up at the top end of the rev range. What we really want for a big heavy old Land Rover like this is lots of torque and lots of it from just off idle. And that's hopefully what this H180 Kent is going to give us. I've never had a cam brand new in wrapping before. Look at this. Look at this, absolutely brand new. And you're, uh, you're happy this one's gonna work this time there? Check. <laughs> Bloody hope so. <laughs> So what, what are we up to here then? So there was oh, something that we didn't get in the cam kit, wasn't there? Yeah, Woodruff key yeah. uh, that the timing gear locates on. Yeah. And I've taken it out of a, an old cam. Here it is, look, the Woodruff yeah. key. Ooh. Yeah. And I'm going to put it in here. Yep. Yeah. Now, the theory is, is that that's what was wrong with the old one, right? Is the Woodruff key had been cut. Probably the slot. Probably the slot in the end, because you can see here, if that is just shifted round by what it only needed nine degrees there to give us 18 degrees total out, yeah. right? Yeah, so. Yep, be good. Disappointing, but fingers crossed. I mean, it's a Kent. They've been doing it long enough, haven't they? Should be so, good. Let's see what happens. So here's where we left off the last time. We've got the timing cover off. And there's the end of the old camshaft. Now you might think, ah, you just pull that and it'll just come out. It uh, doesn't work like that, unfortunately. All of this tap, tap, tap has to come off. The inlet manifold, carburetor has to come off. We also have to remove the rocker assemblies as well as the push rods and all of this here, which is very frustrating as all of this was only fitted a few weeks ago with new gaskets, sealant and whatever. Pain in the bum, but anyway, it's gotta come off. So let's set to, time to pick up the spanners and get on with it.
Right, so all the inlet manifold bolts are out, all the hoses are disconnected, so now it's just the process of persuading the inlet manifold to come off the engine. Now, I did seal this down with some RTV, so it may need a little wedgie. Oh, boop. Easy as that. And there we are. And down, one inlet manifold. With the inlet manifold removed, you really do get to look at what makes a V8 a V8. One bank of four cylinders here, another bank of four cylinders here, and this here is the valley gasket, which we're about to remove. Once you remove that, you gain access to what's called the lifter gallery, and we're gonna go in there because we need to remove the camshaft, and to remove the camshaft, you've gotta remove the lifters. So uh, let's crack on with that. Once you remove that, you gain access to the lifter gallery. What's really surprising me is just how clean this has come up after just a couple of hundred miles of clean oil. Never fails to amaze me how much damage people do to these engines by skipping oil changes. So fresh oil changes, everyone, and they'll keep your cam in good shape. This is what we've got removed down here. The camshaft sits down here. And these little round things here, these are the followers or lifters, however you want to call them. And these are the push rods that are off the back of the cam open and close the valves. So what we have to do to take the camshaft out is we have to remove these rockers, the push rods, and pull these lifters out as well. So shouldn't be too big a job now, but isn't that lovely? Welcome to what a V8 looks like on the inside. Okay, so we're at the stage now where we need to remove the push rods. Now, something that's important is that the push rods go back in the same place they did before. That's because surfaces wear to each other and you want to make sure that the push rods go back in the same place they came out. Now, in this instance, we're putting new lifters in, so there's only one area that needs to mate, but nonetheless, that push rod and the rocker arm has had in this case, probably 100,000 miles of carefully mating to each other, so you need to make sure they go back in the same place. So top tip, which costs absolutely nothing, is use an old box or a piece of cardboard, punch some holes in, and as you remove each push rod, like that, put that in your pre-made hole, and if you just make sure that they all go in in order, you'll be able to make sure that the push rods go back where they're meant to do. So I'm gonna crack on with that, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here's the cam swap itself. Now blink and you'll miss it because for all of the involved teardown that goes before, this happens pretty quickly. So what I'm doing here is I'm removing the old lifters, which I'm numbering and putting into numbered containers because the cam lifters themselves mate to each cam load. Out comes the old cam. Here's the new one. What I'm doing here is I'm covering it in some Kent Cam's Cam Lube, which is a high zinc lube, which helps everything survive on the initial mating procedure. In go the new lifters, which I've soaked overnight in oil, and that's it. And there it is. There's the new cam in place with all of the lovely new lifters, covered in assembly lube, covered in oil, ready to reassemble. Magic. Well, I'm about ready to wrap things up for today. We've made some really nice progress. The new camshaft is in. Here we go, new timing chain set is in. Cam down there, new lifters, push rods, rocker shafts back on. Basically ready for the inlet manifold to go back on and the front timing cover. You'll notice that this is a different design to the old one that was on. That was just the standard Land Rover nylon tooth chain kit. This is a Cloys set, which is a dual roller type, so you can see you've got a duplex chain here, and the proper all steel gears, which is which is nicer. This is the Woodruff key for the crankshaft. This is what positively engages in timing things, but you'll see there's also there's a few of the keyways. Those allow you to fine tune the cam in by a couple of degrees either side of top dead center. Now, we've timed this up, I hope everyone agrees, dot, dot, 
And as far as we can tell, it is basically perfectly timed in. There's no doubt that this cam much, much better timed than the one that came out. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching Motorhouse with me, Bob. Tune in next time when we're gonna get this all built back up and we're gonna go through the cam braking procedure and then fingers crossed, we'll be back on the road with a really nice running Land Rover again. See you again soon on Motorhouse. Bye-bye.